All right, Pops, imagine we are going into the dealership and we want to present ourselves as strong, competent, and capable customers. Say that three times fast. Uh, no, I'm what not What are the three try. questions? Yes. Car dealers, salespeople, sales managers, et cetera, they hate it. They just, it just frustrates them when a customer knows this. What are those three questions that we should all be prepared to ask? Might cause some angst, might cause some frustration, but it'll definitely make sure we don't overpay. Well, uh, you know, Ultimately, you should always be working an out-the-door price on a vehicle. So the first question should be, what's the out-the-door price? What's the total price of the vehicle, including all fees? I want to break down to the selling price, the sales tax, the title registration, any dealer fees. Let's talk about the out-the-door price. Now, in some stores where all they want to talk about is is a payment, they're going to hate that. In in some stores where the salesperson has no real authority, the, the salesperson is not going to know what to do. Um, so don't be surprised if he reports to his team leader or his sales manager and the next person you're talking to is their closer. Um, but you always want to, you want to work an out-the-door price number. You want to know all the taxes, fees, everything involved. So if you start that way, that that creates a little bit of an issue. Number one, what is the out the door price? Now, Dad, we recently covered over on the Ray and Zach channel a Chevy Bolt EUV that was for sale that had a ton of add-ons yes. on the out the door worksheet. Yes. And I saw someone, Dad, when I posted it on TikTok, they asked me, they said, wow, are all of those things required? So I just want to be very clear here. The out the door price will list things that are required, like taxes. You're not going to buy a car unless you're in the state of Washington, I guess, uh, without taxes, without paying sales tax on the thing. So taxes are required. The selling price of the vehicle required. So many of those other items are not required. And you have a great line, Dad. If it's taxable, it's negotiable. And it's, so if you see those line items there and they're taxed, mm -hmm. that means they are not required. And you should be asking the dealer to explain explicitly what each of those items are on the out the door price worksheet, correct? Well, and that is another question that I have here uh, because in today's world, there's a lot of dealer installed accessories um, to help build up the profit on, on the car deals. And a lot of them are overpriced, overvalued accessories. So the next question you might want to ask is, why do I have to pay for the accessories that, well, I didn't want and I didn't ask for, okay? Now, the salesperson is going to tell you, well, we put that on all cars. We did, you know, I can't remember. I didn't ask for it. Are you going to let that stand between you and I making a deal? So always ask, why do you, why do I have to pay for, for the accessories that I didn't want or I didn't ask for? Um, and, and why, why should I pay your inflated retail prices for any of those? Um, you know, good, some, Good salespeople can overcome it. They all should be able to overcome it, but at least it gives you the opportunity to discuss those things in greater detail and, and work off of the prices that they're asking for. All right, good news, Pops. We have another promotion. Yep, spring 20 and spring 100. Get 20% off on our coaches and data or get $100 off on an extended warranty. Spring ahead, everybody. CarEdge.com. Take advantage. Thanks. Question number two then is around the add-ons and accessories. I just want to, a couple notes, a couple comments here on that Bolt EUV worksheet. Maybe we'll pull it back up on the screen. The gap insurance, the warranty, those things are not necessary. Ask that exact question. Why are you putting gap insurance here for $1,500? Why are you telling me the warranty is $4,500? I'm not interested in purchasing gap insurance and warranty. I'm interested in purchasing a car. Those are very appropriate things mm -hmm. for anyone to say, and then they can price shop gap insurance. They can price shop a warranty. The second thing to mention, we've done plenty of videos calling out Toyota and their distributors. Some accessories and add-ons are actually added on by the distributor, so yes. not the OEM, but the company that's responsible for distributing the OEM's products to the dealers at ports. Sadly, those add-ons, I mean, they're negotiable in the sense that any vehicle's MSRP is negotiable, like you can negotiate down from an MSRP. The actual manufacturer's suggested retail price is not negotiable. That is a price that is suggested by the manufacturer, but the selling price typically is a price below the MSRP. So you can still try and negotiate below MSRP. We've recently had some success stories on some Toyotas, but sadly, we are seeing more and more distributors add add-ons and accessories to the vehicles at the port, which adds them to the MSRP. 
So those are situations where you can ask that question to the salesperson all day long, and they're going to say, hey, it's on the Monroni label. It's on the Windows sticker. Yeah, I can't it, help you. It came with the car. Okay. Dealer installed accessories are accessories that the dealer decided to add. Uh, seal a jet for, uh, for paint and interior protection, uh, dent and ding, ding repair, um, a GPS monitor, whatever it is. These are dealer installed things that, that, um, weren't installed at, at, by the distributor or the manufacturer. They're not part of the Monroney label. They're part of an addendum label. And addendum, every one yeah. of those, and every one of those is negotiable. Absolutely. Hopefully we didn't confuse folks there. If we did, leave comments down below. We read them. We'll happily reply. What is the third question, Dad, a customer should feel confident asking when they go to a car dealership? Well, let's assume that you're like 85% of all people and you are more interested in financing than paying cash. So the question you want to ask, whether it be of the salesperson or more appropriately of the finance manager is what is the buy rate on this loan? Now, here's the rationale you are doing if the if the dealership is arranging the financing for you if you give them your credit app and they're arranging the financing that's what's known as indirect lending they are sending the applications to the bank on your behalf getting an approval and the bank gives the dealership a rate for the money the dealership is then entitled and allowed to, if they so choose, to charge you a higher rate than what the bank is charging the dealership. So the amount that the bank is charging the dealership is the buy rate. So you want to ask, what's the buy rate? How much are you marking up the buy rate? Um, will you share with me what the buy rate is? And oftentimes, if you ask that question, somebody's mouth might just drop a little bit because they don't expect to hear that from a customer. They don't expect the customer to know that there's such a thing as a buy rate. So... Buy rate and sell rates are two different things. The buy rate might be 4%. The sell rate might be 6%. You might be able to negotiate the sell rate down to 4.25% or 4.5% or 5%, whatever it is. But if you don't know to ask what the buy rate is, then you won't know how to negotiate the sell rate. What's the out the door price? Yes. Why are you asking? Uh, why are you telling me I need to pay for add ons and accessories? What is the buy rate? You ask those three questions. You you demonstrate to your salesperson, to the sales manager, and to the F and I manager that you're capable, you're competent, and you're confident when you go to buy that car. And those, honestly, Dad, are things that they're looking for out of a customer as well because it means they have better perspective and understanding for what the process is going to be. They don't have unrealistic expectations for what the sales price would be. Like, this is actually the best, most efficient way to get a car deal done is to ask those three questions, get the information you need. And if a dealer won't provide that information, go find another dealer who will give you that information because it could be the simplest, most efficient car deal of your life. And for them too, if you just give the info, get it all out on the table, get it done in an hour, move on in life. Exactly. Well said.